Well, welcome in the name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, we're going to talk about that powerful mystery, Christ in us. And I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. You will find that in the Old Testament days, what defined, what gave value, what took a people that were the least, the children of Israel, and made them the greatest, made them the most blessed, made them the most prosperous, made the most overcoming nation, was the presence of the living God with them. And we as believers, not alone do we have God with us, we have that presence in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. I really pray that this message would so bless and minister to you. But let's start by praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to the treasury of your heart to receive from you. Holy Spirit, take and pour into us. Father, may we have eyes to see, ears to hear, a hearing heart, to receive richly all that you have for us. And may it lift, may it minister, and may it, Father, be a word in season, the warm, fresh bread of your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and the church said amen. Aren't you grateful for the word? Don't you hunger and thirst for the word? Aren't you grateful that every time you come to the word in that secret place of his presence, God has always got fresh, now revelation. He can take something you've read a thousand times and make it new and have it some in it, something that speaks to you right where you're at, to lift you, to bless you, to minister to you, to give you hope. Uh, turn with me real quickly to Romans 8. In Romans 8, chapter 10, if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. This presence of the living God, I pray that we get deeper understanding by the spirit, revelation knowledge, spoken spirit to spirit, and that we would understand how as believers we have become new creations. The whole earth, because of the fall, became dead spiritually. But when we receive Jesus, what he did on that cross, the final finished work of the cross, the precious blood of Jesus, we became alive spiritually and Christ came and dwelt in us. That is one of the most powerful mysteries that we cannot understand naturally. It has to be understood spiritually. And may the Spirit give us revelation. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 and 16, listen to this, Paul talking of himself. But when God, who had set me apart even from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his Son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood. He pursued the Lord that season, and God wants to do something to reveal Christ in you to reveal Jesus in you. We are called to be witnesses. Witnesses of what? The preaching of the gospel is us being a witness according to what God has called us to, according to the gifting God has put in us. And it's about us revealing Christ in us. Christ in you should transform you and change you, should so lift you that you should have something that when the world sees you, they should say, I want what you have. Up to now, the church has walked as something that the world has looked at and said, I don't want that. And I've looked at it and said, I don't want it either. But what Jesus is offering us as believers should be the greatest thing, Him coming, abiding with us and in us. I look at our services and how many church services, you don't talk about the presence of God. You don't feel the overwhelm of the presence. We don't get into the place where everything goes around the presence. We don't want to offend the presence. Our worship, we will change all things to make sure that we don't offend the presence. How long we preach, what we preach, that God can change things at any minute. Our worship can change. There can be a natural flow to it. We become so used to organization that we've organized the presence out 
of our services and out of our lives. And you will find, I love to study revivals. And when you look at revivals, you see that spontaneity that came as they understood and recognized the presence. And they gave value to the presence more than decorum, more than organization. They allowed the Spirit of God to move. And as a consequence, the presence came and every need was met in the presence. Paul adds this in Colossians 1, verse 27. To whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. I don't hear many messages focusing on this wonderful mystery, laying hold of, pressing in to greater and deeper waters, that we may lay hold of what God is saying to us through Paul in this letter, Christ in us, the hope of glory. This verse should be life-changing because if we get the revelation of the most anointed service we can think of, and maybe you've experienced at least one, where the presence of God fills the place, where the air is so thick, you can touch it. The word glory means weight, and there's a weight of His glory, of His presence, and you just feel that weight. You feel the, the presence, and it changes you. It does something in you. Lives are erect. Lives are never the same after a meeting like that. That same presence that filled the place abides in you. And it should be taking you and lifting you. You know, we are very aware of when somebody is possessed by some kind of evil spirit. We can tell what that evil spirit is by the manifestations that come forth from. Because the person becomes transformed. And if you've ever seen somebody um, taken over by alcoholism or some addiction, you see how they change and they come to this place where they're not that person anymore. You can't see that person. They become so faded. This thing has so consumed them. But the living God comes in such a way as a gentleman, the most powerful person in the whole universe comes as a gentleman, not overriding our free will, but desiring to be co-workers with us and as we allow him to come and do such a work in us. Smith Wigglesworth said, I believe that God wants to bring to our eyes and our ears a living realization of what the Word of God is, what the Lord God means, and what that we might expect if we believe. That here in this place, as that presence is in us, and we read the Word, we read it from a place, not just knowledgeably uh, from this brain tissue gaining an understanding, but walk in revelation where we begin to see Him, understand as the Spirit makes it personal what Jesus did, what it means to us, and what God desires to bring forth into our lives, what He's made available to us through Christ. So the Word goes from being a nice, inspirational book to life where we become dependent on it. And because the presence abides in us and with us, we have this a surety. We have this seal. We have a confidence and a boldness. I've thought about those in the Old Testament, like Elijah, and some of the things that he did. How could such a person stand and challenge all of these worshipers of Baal? With all the power that they had, with a confidence, because the presence of God that was with him. How could these men and women go through such terrible torture? and be confident and be so set, steadfast because of the presence of God with them. How can you take uneducated men, these disciples, and turn the world upside down because of the presence? It was something bigger than them, with them, and in them, always lifting them, always delivering them. Smith Wigglesworth said, It is only truth revealed to our hearts 
that can make us so much greater than we have ever had an idea we were. I believe there are volumes of truth right in the midst of our own hearts. Only there is a need of revelation and of a stirring of ourselves up to understand the mightiness which God has within us. We may prove that He has accomplished, uh, accomplished this for us if we're only willing. There has to come to us this place of simply being willing to allow the living God to so open, to so give revelation of that word, to speak it into our lives, to enable that word to be productive, fruitful. What a glorious day where we go from that place of simply just reading of the promises. Rather, now we are in the place of enjoying, seeing the promises manifesting in us, producing through us, and in all of it, Jesus getting the glory. Not by our strength, not by our might. We have to learn, and this is where it comes by faith, faith in the living God, a trust in Him who is with us and in us, who has not left us. We're not in the wilderness walking alone. Jesus, driven into the wilderness, that place where everything is death, that place where everything was out to destroy Him, He was kept because in it, the Holy Spirit was always with him. May we get that revelation that even in your darkest hour, you are not forsaken. The Holy Spirit is with you. Further, he is in you. Smith went on to say, For God has not accomplished something in us that we should lie dormant, but has brought within us a power, a revelation, a life that is so great that I believe God wants to reveal that greatness, the greatness of it, the possibilities of man in the hands of God. The Holy Spirit in us, taking this frail flesh vessel, transforming it by His hands, taking it as He took the clay and made Adam, taking of this clay vessel and making something for His glory to demonstrate through it that He abides in us and He abides with us that he takes a vessel that simply will walk by faith, walk in faithfulness and obedience before him, listening to his voice, what he can do. He can cause you to be a history maker, to turn the world upside down, that no matter what you face, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So that he's greater, he's the stronger, strong man, the greater, the greater one. Now, Smith went on to say, but everything on a natural basis is very limited to what God has for us on a spiritual basis. We are meant to walk by a new order, the order of the spirit, not the natural. We are so held captive by the natural realm, which has our thoughts, our cares, our worries, consumes us with memories and hurts, all those things that go after the soul arena. But we are meant to walk by the spirit and daily become more aware of the abiding presence in us transforming us. I love the verse that is so mind-blowing that John would write in his letter that as he is, so too are you in this world. That is such an incredible thought. As he is, so too. Not that you will be, but you are. How can I be that? Because Christ in you, Christ with you, he is the one changing you. See, I cannot fabricate, I cannot make this, I cannot manufacture the things of God. Many people that walk in the spirit of religion, which is a counterfeit, which is a false version, and it's pervaded and filled so many churches where they walk trying and they're realized by the letter of the law to accomplish this perfection to walk right, to walk in a place where they are pleasing God. And some people are walking in sincerity doing it. And you can be sincere 100% and sincerely wrong 100%. God wants to show us that this is not by your fabrication. It's not by your efforts, but it is by our surrender. It's by us coming into the secret place of His presence and allowing Christ to in us to do what only he can do and then allowing Christ to manifest through us that's the preaching that's the call now to each one he will call us in a different way but each call is put simply 
the manifestation of His indwelling in us, us simply allowing Him to pull back the veil and reveal His glory through this frail earthen vessel. The more time I spend in His presence, the more time I seek His face and allow that revelation of His presence to grow in me, the more effective I am in ministry. Because I discovered I don't have what the people need. He does. I have to learn by the Spirit, asking Him to show and teach me how can I get out of the way and allow the living God to manifest through me. I have to spend more time seeking His face. I have to seek Him. And the more I see and become aware of His presence, the way I think, the way I see changes. Because you become like Him. You take on the mannerisms. You take on um, the acts, the personality of those you esteem. May He be the one that you esteem, that you hunger and thirst after. I just want to be like Him. Many people want to be like people on the earth. They may even want to be like good people. And to a certain degree, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But in that following, as a good spiritual leader, he sought to bring those that followed him to that place of a greater intimacy with the Lord, dependence upon the Lord and not upon him. So that they were seeing the Lord and going after and imitating really Jesus, not Paul. Paul would explain, no good thing dwells in me. What you need is Jesus. And I really believe that true spiritual leaders are pointing people to Jesus, creating in people greater dependence on Jesus and not on themselves. Now, Smith was explaining that in this place where you get awareness of that abiding presence, that call, that purpose, cannot lie dormant, cannot, because Christ in you wants to be revealed through you. And the more time you spend in here, you become stirred up, you become provoked. And as you take and spend this in the right season in that secret place, staying in season, you will find the Spirit of God will bring you, lead you step by step, so you're always in the right place, always doing the right thing, and you are fulfilling the high call. Smith went on to say this, Then I want you to see how satanic power works in the mind. And we've got to understand that what the enemy wants is mind share. Because if he gets mind share, he can go after heart share. Mind share talks about what your mind has been consumed by. That's why he loves to get you in that place of weakness when you are alone to overwhelm you, to overwhelm you with cares, worries, memories, thoughts, things of the past, to get that voice speaking so loud that it takes and builds strongholds in the mind. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 5, we are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You know, that awareness of His presence should cause in you a greater awareness that we don't want to offend Him. I don't want to do anything that grieves, hinders Him. And so we become aware of every thought, every emotion, all those things, all those voices that demand rights, that demand to be heard, that when we give way to them, grieve the Spirit of God, grieve the anointing in us. And as a consequence, we begin to learn as we sow to the Spirit, to take these things captive and bring them into the obedience of the Lord. I love the word things. Well, let me look at a couple things here. The word speculation, okay, comes from the Greek word logomos, and it means a judgment that our conscious passes inside of us. So in other words, we make a quality decision on something based on the evidence that we've been given. And we look at things and we... We're hurt, we're injured, and we have a right to justice, and so we pass a judgment in us, and we've made a decision in this direction. And often these things, which can be legitimate, can become so big in us that they overwhelm the voice of the living God. They become the driving force in our lives. How many people are more moved by something on the earth that is earthly and temporal 
uh, a cause that has consumed them and they've lost the cause of Christ. As long as we're here on the earth, our purpose is the cause of Christ. Our purpose is to become more aware of Him and to walk in such a way that we please Him and that we don't allow any voice, no matter how legitimate or anything else, it must be brought captive to Him. The word thing, which comes from hypsoma, uh, which means anything that creates a barrier. It's any thing. And we think about demonic spirits, how they want to create barriers. They want to create hindrances, traps, and other things so that we stop moving forward. And we have to make sure that we do not allow anything greater respect in our lives or allow a thing to take us and distract us from serving the living God. No thing. We want the Lord to fix these things, and we get caught up in the things so that we forget seeking His face. These things, what they're after, is to get before you, to get your eyesight so that you're no longer looking at the face of the living God. And we lose sight of who's in us, and we become more persuaded by these things. They become bigger to us. They become greater to us. And as a consequence, the revelation that the Almighty One, the Dread Champion, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, abides in you, fades. We need an understanding that our God is greater. Our God is bigger. I get called by so many people who are going through things, and if they could simply get the revelation that God is bigger. The problem is they have allowed things to speak into their lives. They have allowed things to capture them. They have allowed things greater authority, and they have lost sight of this glorious mystery, Christ in you, and who Christ is. We need to get back to the Word, allow the Spirit of God to speak it to us with final and absolute authority, and give us revelation that our God, who He is, what He did, He will make it personal. He will pour it into your spirit until your spirit is pumped up and alive. You know, I said, and I've shared this story, how John the Baptist, when he got alone, he wasn't functioning and flowing. There's something when you're functioning and flowing that there's an anointing that comes with it, and it's easier to run. And many people are carried by the anointing of the call, but then there comes seasons where that anointing stops, and John the Baptist found himself in a prison, not functioning, not flowing, and he became vulnerable. And you've got to become stronger on the inside than you are than the, than the call. What's in you, and that is what we've got to lay hold of, that Christ in you, that revelation has got to get bigger. Your call doesn't define you, He does. We are so often seeing our value through the call and through things when it should be Him. Build that revelation, Christ in you, every single day. And as you do, the call becomes something where we allow Him who is in us to be revealed through us. Our identity, my value is in Him. All my eyes, my thoughts, my heart must be focused on Him. He must be everything. He must be my all in all. Smith explained, I find men who might be giants of the faith, who might be leaders of society, who might rise up to subdue, subdue kingdoms, who might be noble amongst prince, princes, but they go down because they allow the suggestions of Satan to dethrone their better knowledge of the power of God. These things. If we could just simply by the Spirit of the living God see and recognize these things, the source, where they're coming from. There's several voices on this earth. There's the voice of heaven, there is the voice of heaven which comes and it always seeks to honor the Word and lift up the Word and build the Word in you. And when it does, it stirs you up spiritually and builds strength in you. Then there's the Word of the, the, your flesh, your emotions, your thoughts, your memories. There's the voice of the world, which is never in your favor because it's based on survival of the fittest. And when you're strong, it will lift you up. And when you are weak, it will put you down and seek to destroy you. It wants to manipulate you and it will use you for its gain. Then there's the voice of the enemy who hates you with a passion, wants to kill, steal, and destroy. We've got to stop allowing these voices that are of the natural order, that bring facts that are subject to change. I don't care what you're going through. If it's something on the earth 
It is temporal and subject to change. It may feel eternal. It may feel loud. It may feel like, I don't know that I'm going to make it through it. But if God is with you, if He is in you, and you get a hold of that, He is more than able. You've got a greater one in you. What a glorious place to be when we cannot of our natural strength overcome. And God's got to do it. And we've got to learn to cling to Him. We've got to get a revelation of how great He is and how He is in us, 100% committed. He's not, listen, if you go down, He goes down with you. So let's cling to Him. Let's make sure that we're found in Him. Let's make sure that we go after Him and don't put things in the way that would hinder, things in the way that would rob us of pressing in. In Exodus 33, verses 14 and 15, Moses and, and the Lord are speaking, and the Lord says to Moses, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And Moses responded and said, If your presence does not go with us, do not lead us from here. Moses was smart enough to realize what's going to make us is the presence. What lifts us is the presence. What defines us is the presence. Without the presence, we're just like a normal people. In fact, we're the least. We look at the enemies and they're greater. We're merely grasshoppers in their sight. They're stronger. They already have the land. They have the advantage. They're the incumbents. We cannot. And maybe that's where you're at. You're looking from the natural perspective on your natural strength and you don't stand a chance. What you're going through, you're looking and God, it's too big for me. It's too great. But He, His presence in you, with you, 100% committed to you. And He already overcame. The overcomer is in you. He's already in you. Smith said, There are none so deaf as those who won't hear. None so blind as those who won't see. But God has given you ears, and He wants you to hear. May we hear. In John 8, 32, Jesus, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I like the fact there's times he turns up and he sets you free instantly. That in his presence is there fullness of joy, but the Spirit of God sets us free. He just makes us free. And when we abide in the truth, and we hear the truth, and we receive the truth, and it's allowed to speak into our lives, and we give greater attention to the truth than things, the truth makes us. Just as God took that clay and He made Adam, He invested time, energy, effort. You have to take and invest time, energy, effort every single day to get in the Word and allow that revelation of the Word to make you free, to speak to you, to receive it, and allow it to work in you. We spend so much time and attention focused on our cares, our worries, and all these things, all the things that you're going through, the more time and attention you give to it, the bigger it grows in you. And God wants to bring you to a place that what's loudest in your life is His Word. What's greater in you is His presence. And He, the revelation of who He really is, the one who made all things, did all things, upholds all things, we're worried about something temporal on this earth. Something subject to the one who made it. And yet the one who made all things, upholds all things, is in you. The one who's able and has an uh, unlimited resource, unlimited number of ways he can bring a breakthrough, is in you. He is with you. He's not far off. You don't need to go through somebody. Sometimes we think, well, I need this person to pray for me. I need, if I just get this person. No, we need Him. And we need to get a greater, deeper revelation of Him. And when you are in that secret place, when there's nobody else around, and the voice of these things are trying to consume you, that is the time where you've got to surrender the secret place of your heart to Him and allow that wondrous, wondrous, glorious mystery to occur, Christ in you. 
Holy Spirit, come and enthrone Jesus in the secret place of my heart. Because when His presence is with you, do you see what He told Moses? And I will give you a rest. That peace caused the storm to cease. The only way you can get out of it is through His presence. And allowing His presence to invade every fiber of your being. Allow it to pour in, pour through every thought, every emotion, every aspect of your life until you are wholly, completely His. You know, years ago when I was in the midst of the most difficult challenge of my life, I sought the Lord and what I wanted Him to do, what I thought He had to do, I had predetermined, I had worked it out. And so I'm praying with an absolute desperation, an absolute hunger, and I know He's there, I know He's turned up, and I'm waiting for Him to hear and do what I figured He's got to do. But instead, He turns up and He said, pray this every single day, that you have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. And I'm like, Lord, how is that going to change things? I can tell you today, many years later, how that has been the greatest breakthrough in my life. Because as we get eyes to see, ears to hear, we change and we stop looking at the things that have tried to capture us and we see Him. And we hear the truth and His Word is able to liberate us and it's able to produce in us and lift us. Smith said, God wants to make men as flames of fire. God wants to make men strong to the Lord and in the power of His might. Therefore, beloved, if you will hear the truth of the gospel, you will see that God has made provision for you to be strong, to be on fire, to be as though you were quickened from the dead, to be as those who have seen the King and those who have a resurrection touch. We know that we are the sons of God with power as we believe His word and stand in the truth of His word. Always walking with this revelation that's growing, a fire in our bones, Christ in us never leaving us. We love what the psalmist said, that he is a present help, Psalm 46, in time of trouble. He is there with us, in us, 100% committed. Not leaving, not forsaking. Smith went on, the Spirit of the Lord breathes upon the slain, upon the dry bones, and upon the things which are not, and changes them in a flash, in a moment of time and makes that which is weak strong. That's who's in you. That's who's in you. And we need to hear the Spirit of God take of the rich treasures of the Word and show them, bring them by revelation to our hearts so we would see them through what Jesus did and how they are ours and see what God is trying to do in us and through us and how we have been looking in all the wrong places, listening to all the wrong voices, all the wrong things and it's time we changed and realized greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world that we've got this mystery Christ in us that anointing of the living God that came on Jesus in you changing you transforming you every believer Smith said has the life of the Lord in him and if Jesus were to come who is our life instantly our life would go out to meet his life because we exist and consist of the life of the Son of God. You are so connected. He is in you. You cannot. Jesus said, where He is, that's where we are to be. Where He is. We cannot be separated from Him. We are connected to Him. He is in us, never leaving us, never forsaking us, if we can pursue, if we will go after, if we will hunger and thirst if we will seek His face and stop listening to the wrong voices, stop being caught up busy doing things, listening to things and not abiding in the place of life. Smith went on to say, I want to bring before you an inward knowledge of a power in you greater than any power. And I trust by the help of the Spirit that I may bring it you bring you in a place of deliverance, a place of holy sanctification, where you dare stand against the vials of the devil and drive them back and cast them out. The Lord help us. See, in this place, when you get that revelation of Christ in you, something changes. 
because these voices which for so long controlled, dictated, spoke to you, now a lion arises in you and you begin to go and stand and command these voices to go. They have no right, they have no place in your life. Jesus reigns and you take a hold of the word and you're not just speaking promises, you're declaring them with a life and with an authority by the Spirit and you know it. And there's an impact, there's a spiritual punch that you feel. You know you're accomplishing things. There's a place. I love that place of, a comp of confidence. You know, if you've ever been in sports, I don't care what sport you're in, but when you're in that place, you can call it the anointing, that confident place. You know it. And you just flow and you're successful. And you know when you step out of it, you miss. I mean, when you're in that place, you can be on the three-point line, play basketball, it's in every time. When we get a revelation and walk in that place, holy surrender, Christ in you, you are in the place of victory. You are in the place where you always overcome because it's not by your doing, but by the one who's already done it, working it through you. Smith said, this is a new dispensation, this divine place, Christ in you, the hope and evidence of glory. We look at, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, how God saw this frail earthen vessel and He shone light into it, into this dark place. Put His glory in this frail earthen vessel that is so often seen in the cracks, seen in my weaknesses, declared through this yielded vessel, humbled in His mighty hand. And what I want people to see is not me, but Jesus. Because the only thing that remains is Jesus. The only thing that can lift is Jesus. The only thing that can give you the breakthrough is Jesus. The hope of glory, Christ in you, that He might demonstrate the greatness of His love, the power of His kindness, the gentleness, tenderness of His character in you. All the things that Jesus was perfected, being brought forth in you, changing you. We're so persuaded, well, I'm born this way. This is just the way I am. And we've allowed that thing to speak too long to us. We've allowed that thing to persuade us and become authority instead of allowing this wonderful, glorious mystery, Christ in me. But people won't like it. I don't care what people like. I care what Jesus likes. I want this relationship with Him to be the most important thing in my life. My victory is only in Him, not in you. And the only way that I can bless you, somebody else, the only way that I can minister life to somebody else is in him. I played the game of being politically nice because I don't want to offend. I just want to be liked. But I don't leave anything. I have found that when I'm in him, there comes forth an afterglow that touches, that touches and goes deeper and minister to them. And that's what they need, not me. And the, I cannot fabricate that. It has to come through a yieldedness and allowing that wonderful mystery, Christ in us, to grow. Colossians 3, 3, Paul said this, For you have died. Think about that. You have died. And we're so focused on this dead being. We allow this dead being to continue to reign. We allow this dead thing to continue to have all these memories, all these hurts, and it's dead. And it's time we start to get a hold of it. It's dead. And listen, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. This new life, hidden with Christ. It's found in Him. In Him. And that's why every single day I want to spend time in the secret place saying, teach me, show me the new me, reveal to me in you. As I look in you, I want to see like I'm looking in me. I want to be like you. I want to be transformed just like you. I want to see the new and wondrous life because as I look at Him, I see that which is absolutely perfect. 
I think that's where the problems lie for several people. They have seen an imperfect Jesus. Jesus is perfect. If the Spirit of God would just open our eyes today, that we would see every perfection is in Him. There's no one more perfect. He has everything we need. And I want to be like Him so that as I'm on this earth, people see Him, receive from Him, I want to bless people, and many people have a sincere heart trying to sincerely bless, but the only way you can is to allow Him in you to work through you. Isaiah 45 verse 3, I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden wealth of secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. There's nothing more powerful, more beautiful when the Lord calls you by name. It is intimacy. It is precious. It's powerful. It lifts you. I mean, I don't care what you're going through in a day. When He calls you by name, everything changes. Time stops. And He becomes the center. Consumes. If you're in love with somebody, you know, and they call, you can so lose sight and track of time all consumed and we are to be all consumed as he calls you by name and he wants to take of the secret places of his heart and pour into you the greatest treasures the greatest things him abiding in you pouring in pouring through you pressed on shaken together overflowing but We've all these buts, all these limitations, all, I can't do this, I can't do that. He can. He can. Smith said, the Holy Spirit is coming to take out of the world a church that is perf a perfect bride. He must find in us perfect yieldedness with every desire subjected to Him. He has come to reveal Christ in us so that the glorious flow of the life of God may flow out of us, bringing rivers of living water to the thirsty. The greatest treasure. I love how years ago, you know, we started working on the God's General series, and I wanted artwork. Took us some pictures, and all of a sudden I got complaints. You don't have copyright. You don't have right to use those pictures. And I said, Lord, what am I going to do? And it's a draw and paint them. I said, Lord, I haven't painted or drawn since I was a kid. I can't do that. And it reminds me of this wonderful verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Workers with Him. In this place of just getting out of the way. Walking with, surrendering. says, I will take you, show you, teach you. And I'm sure grateful. I'm not there yet. But I'm grateful from where I was to what he's done. I could have just continued to resist and said, God, I can't. Can't. And I said, Lord, I'll look foolish. And he said, but people will see the change and it will be me, not you. So if you see any improvement, it's him, not me. If you see all the flaws, imperfections, it's him. My testimony is to boast in Him, the one who is in me, this hope of glory, that can take a yielded vessel and do something bigger through. He doesn't call you based on your skill set, all the things that you can do naturally, but He calls you based on your yieldedness and faithfulness. And in that place, Christ in you takes a vessel and uses it for His glory, demonstrates His glory, can take something and do something above and beyond. Let me continue here. In chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians, Paul is talking about the Old Testament and the glory, the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the glory that was with it. And he explains about Moses and how Moses went up the hill, met the Lord, and comes down glowing with this glory, they put a veil in his face. 
He then says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, how will the ministry of the Spirit fail to be even with more glory? This ministry of the Holy Spirit should come along, and it's not a fading, but it's an always increasing. It's an always multiplying, because it's got the touch of God, which is always increase. And God wants to do something greater. If we saw glory in the Old Testament, the New Testament church should be with even more glory. And this wonderful revelation, Christ in us, taking that which is natural and making it spiritual, supernatural by His hand, taking a life held in all kinds of addictions and weaknesses and transforming it and bringing it into a liberty, into a perfection that only can be accomplished by His hands, taking a life and transforming it. That's why He can have hope for marriages, hope for relationships, hope for finance, hope because He is the one that can do it. If we surrender the wheel, if we yield, if we get a hold of the power of simply yielding to Him, daily seeking Him. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 11 through 13. For if that which fades away was with glory, much more that which remains is in glory. Therefore, having such a hope, we use great boldness in our speech and are not like Moses, who used to put a veil over his face so that the sons of Israel would not look intently at that which was fading away. But we reflect, we glow, because we spend time in the secret place in His presence and we radiate that which He is. And the world sees it. And it's got to get bigger in us every single day. That mystery, Christ in us by the Spirit of the living God, should so consume you, overwhelm you, that every day I'm in His presence. I want to know Him. I want to become like Him. That must drive us. So we're pressing forward on every single day. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in what? Earthen vessels. So that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not ourselves. Not me doing it. So that in me there would be a constant testimony of a life being transformed. Of God working through me something that was beyond my ability. Because He doesn't call you based on your knowledge. He doesn't call you based on what you can do. He calls you based on what He can do. He can do it in a yielded, surrendered vessel. And the degree that we get out of the way is the degree that He's able to work in us and through us. Sometimes we well, God's all-powerful. Yeah. But you remember when He came to His hometown? It says because of their unbelief, He could do no mighty work. God could do no mighty work because of their unbelief. And there's so many people that are so resistant because they see, I can't do that. That's not me. And they don't see or get the revelation of Christ in them. Christ in them. We're more worried about our pride, our image, and we need to lay them on the altar and see ourselves through His eyes and allow the greater one to work in us, to take of this earthen vessel and to do something bigger. Smith said, The Holy Spirit must find in us perfect yieldedness with every human de desire subjected to Him. No one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. He has come to reveal Christ in us so that the glorious flow of life will come forth from us. I want to be such a vessel that I can present before Him a crown, having produced fruit on this earth for His glory. Life's touched. And the more I look, you know, what I had started off, what I saw, the goal of ministry in my heart, sincere but sincerely wrong. He had to change. The, the, the true understanding what it means to pastor, the true understanding what it means to reach the backslidden, I never got until I surrendered an earthen vessel and allowed Him in me to break me, to bring forth of Himself, to allow His thoughts to get a hold of me, to allow His thoughts to consume me, to allow His ways to become my ways, to come to the place where 
It's not just, okay, God, you have your way. But there's a delight in Him because His ways are so much greater, bigger. I'm aware Him in me, always showing me how great He is, how great His ways are, and how I can trust Him. That I just want to get out of the way. And my heart cry now is more. Lord, I've seen the tens of thousands that the ministry's brought in. I'm like, God, more. Can I have more impact? How can I get out of the way and allow you to pour more through me? How can I get to the place that my words, my messages would carry more of you and less of me? That they would be more in time feeding your people. How? Let me finish with this from Smith. The Spirit has to breathe into us a new occupancy, a new order. The Holy Spirit came to give the vision of a life in which Jesus is perfected. It is Christ who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace. God calling, lifting Christ in us. He so desires to bring us to such a place, a revelation of Him, and that in a frail earthen vessel, with all of its limitations, all of its inabilities, all of its restrictions, all of its frailties, all of its cracks, all of those things, when yielded to Him, Christ in us, given right and given way, allowed to occupy the throne of our affections and imagination, allowed to use this vessel, can do something bigger, produce something greater. And it is found that in every day when no one's around. It is found in the day of trial when the pressure's on that my heart responds and goes after Him. That I refuse to allow this into my life. These cares, these worries, these concerns. I'm after Him. When no one's around, I'm after Him. That throughout the day, I seek Him. I'm giving to Him. I'm yielding to Him. And every time I blow it, I miss it. I get back up. I repent. Wash me with your blood. Show me. Teach me because I'm living for Him. I cannot run because He's in me. It's not a case of where I go, He will find me. No, He's in me. He's in me. And I want Him louder in me, bigger in me than me. I want His voice to be allowed to speak through me. I want Him to manifest. I want Him to minister, to change. And every day, I realize how far short I fall. I realize how far I've got to go. But I don't look at me and my limitations. I look at Him and His abilities. And I say, God, I trust you. I yield. Show me. Teach me. I yield to you. Well, I pray this message has blessed you, ministered to you, and it has. I would please ask, would you like, share, and subscribe? We want to reach more people. And I'm believing God for, right now, this next stage, by my spirit, 250,000 subscribers. Why? Because we want greater impact to see more backsliders, more backsliders brought back. We're in the last hour, and something in me is so stirred to reach, not to build a ministry of myself, but to reach backsliders and to see believers living boldly for Jesus. I want to see increase for that purpose. It's in me. And I'm seeking those that will stand with me in prayer because it's done by people together standing in prayer. I will show it in the Word. And so if God puts in your heart, would you consider joining my prayer partner program? It costs you nothing. You will receive invites to our Zoom meetings. And if you don't have a local church right now, while you're seeking one, consider joining ours. For more information on our partnership, simply go to robertpairs.org and the partner page for the church. Go to the church page. And if God puts in your heart to be a financial partner, we thank you. We need those too. And I'm believing this ministry walks by faith. And I believe that God will put in the hearts of the right people to give. And that we don't play and manipulate. We don't ask or go after. I seek that the Lord will provide and stir in the hearts of the right people. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for watching. I want to bless you. And I want you to know that we're praying for you. And that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad it in it because of through and for him and what a wonderful revelation the hope of glory christ in us amen be blessed in the name of jesus amen and amen